This is Made for More Living with Johnny Jennings, powered by EXP Realty. Online at madeformoreliving.com. Everybody is so obsessed, like Simon Sinek. I think it's it's all about the why, getting into the why, 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 why. And that's that's your opinion in too. Life. Right? In, in life, in life, you like, gotta have, you gotta know your why in order to progress down your journey that you're on. You gotta have the why. That's the root of of it all. You can't just be going through the motions if you don't know why you're doing it. You don't agree with that? Not entirely, no. And so here, here, and here's why. Um, the so I work with a lot of agents. I coach a lot of agents on our team, and part of my my job is helping them achieve what it is they're working towards. Because we're all here, not you know just just because we like showing houses and we like meeting great people, but we're here ultimately to earn a living for our families. Sure, and all people. That's your why. That's and that's <laughs> why. And so that's people have different goals on what that that what that is. So um, like income goals, shall we say. But their why is almost always universal. Why are they doing it? To improve their quality of life, to provide for their family, right? To be, to have time freedom. Like the whys are all the same. And if the why was so important, if the why was the determining factor between somebody's success and somebody's lack of success, then all real estate agents would be successful because they all have very, very similar whys. Most people outside of business as well, like outside of real estate, have the same why. I'm doing it for my family. I'm doing it for security. I'm doing it for... That's a good point. That's a good point. And if the why was the driver, then why are we not all That is a very good point. I hear what you're saying. But I think maybe a lot of people that are not successful, they're not rooted in their why. They're not tied into it or they're not connected with their why as much as they should be. Mm -hmm. You know, I think oftentimes you need a constant reminder of why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? And a lot of people don't do that. They get stuck in the mud of just going through the motions. And from time to time, they need to go on a retreat or to a conference or even just spend some time with your family and realize, okay, this is why I'm doing it. And you're right though. You are right. That for most people, it's a universal why. It's because I obviously, I need to make a living for myself and provide for my family or just for myself. But oftentimes there's a little bit more to it. You're obviously not in real estate just because you want to provide for your family, Mm -hmm. right? Wouldn't you agree? Oh, absolutely. But here's the the thing that I have found that differentiates the people who achieve success in real estate or in other areas of life. And that it's not the why, it's the what. Specifically, what is that person willing to sacrifice? Like, if you're Michael Phelps, are you willing to get up early in the morning and do the same freaking strokes your entire right. life? Are you willing to do that? Good like, point. What are you What are you willing to sacrifice? If you're in real estate, I can't tell you. Like last night, you know, I was uh, put putting my kid down, and I got a call from one of our agents. Picked up the phone call because this is this guy's. Like he he needs my help. I have the information he needs. And if I help him correctly, he's going to be able to provide an income for his family. So Jack had to Jack had to wait. Jack is two and a half years old, and he is very good. A lot of real estate agents' kids are very good at this. Some, not so much. But when their parents are on the phone, they know they have to be quiet because their parents are working. And so, what are you willing to sacrifice? And I'm not saying one thing's bad. Like people have different goals, different aspirations. I'm not saying one thing's you know, right. better than the other, but. What that person is willing to sacrifice is sure. different. Yeah, that's a great point. And You're gu- right. And I guarantee 100% the people who, who are out there that, that you, like not you, Matt, but like just people sure. look at and think, oh, they have it easy or they, I wish I could be like them or I wish I had what they had. Like their problems are way bigger and they've sacrificed way more than you have to get to that point. Yeah. And so you have to dial in not why you're doing it cuz yeah, everybody wants to do it for their family, everybody wants to have some stability in their life, they want to maybe go on some vacations, build some wealth, but what are you willing to sacrifice to make those dreams a reality? Touche, good point. I love where you went there. But that's not what this book that you're talking about is about, right? No, no. So so who not how it's a book. It's called Who Not How. Who Not How and it's, it's written by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Benjamin Hardy. And, um, and it's not a book just on real estate, or is it? No, this okay. is not a real estate book. This is, um, this is a, I would argue, maybe a more of a business book. Okay. But it applies, into, applies to all areas of life, because the, the simple premise of the book is, if let's, let's say, if you want to lose weight, who can help you lose the weight? Like Ultimately, there's a certain sense of personal responsibility, but who has the information 
that can help you attain that. It's not, this is the right diet or exercise plan. It's who can help me with this. It's who can help me. If you are looking to do financial planning and save for retirement, who is the person that can help you with where you're at and help you get to where you want to go. So what the book is saying, then bottom line is people that are successful have, have the strategic people in their lives to help them. They're constantly looking for, for the who they're constantly looking for the who. And so if you have a problem in, in business or in personal, like, like marriage counseling, for example, right? Like if, if you have a problem with your marriage, who can, can provide insight and clarity on how to fix this? And so rather than trying to think of how can I fix this, who can help me? Right. And so when it comes to real estate and you're thinking, hey, the market's too high, interest rates are too high, I don't know what the first step is, um, I don't even know if I can get enough out of my home, like, there's just all these, how do I solve all these problems? Instead of thinking, how do I solve it, start thinking about who has the information that can help sure. me with this. I like that because there is a lot of people that are in the same boat as you are facing the same type of circumstances in, with the economy, with the inventory, with the interest rates, but they have been more successful in either selling their home or purchasing the home that they want because they've connected with the right people that can help them. Correct. And there, there's so many different people involved in a real estate transaction besides the real estate agent. And so I was talking recently with somebody who was thinking about selling their home on their own and uh, doing a for, like a for sale by owner type of a situation. And I said, hey, totally get it. You know, um, a lot of people are wanting to save on, on fees and, and add that to the bottom line. But like, if you were to go down this route, who would you use for title and escrow? Like, who, who's, a good t who's a good title rep or escrow officer? Who would, how do you know if the inspections being performed are legitimate or not? Are they with a good company or not? How do you know the closing costs are set up in a way that's customary in our market and you're not getting taken advantage of? How do you know, like, how do you know how to properly disclose things so then that way, if the sellers or so the buyers end up having some issues, they can't come back and, and sue you? Like there's just those just those little nuance or offers when an offer comes in. How do I know if this is a good offer? How do I know how to how to negotiate this offer without leaving money on the table and not losing this buyer? And that's where the real estate agent comes in. That's that's the knowledge that the the the, the who the the real estate agent brings to the table. Marketing is a huge piece. Don't get me wrong. If you're selling a home, marketing is huge. But what's more important is really the negotiation stage. Right. So we do a lot of marketing. We do tons and tons and tons of different act like there's different avenues that we take to make sure that you're netting the most amount of money. Like we have a Bay Area buyer program, we have a smart seller program, we have um, a buy before you sell. We have all these different tools and all these different avenues that we can promote your home. But the real kicker is if we have these offers, the best offer is the one that's going to close. Right. So how do we identify which one is the best offer that's going to close, and how do we see that through to completion? Because we can, we can, everybody can know your home's for sale, but until it closes, that's when you get paid as a seller. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and I like what you, I think. A lot of people feel anxious about reaching out and connecting with people, thinking, oh, I'm going to waste yeah. their time. I don't want to be a burden on them. They're yeah. busy. But that's not. That's a false assumption, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. So with real estate agents. Like we are tasked with having real estate conversations. In order for a real estate agent to feel good about moving the needle in their business, they need to be having real estate conversations on a daily basis. And so by you reaching out, you're actually doing that real estate agent a favor because you're helping them talk about what they're passionate about, talk about what they're knowledgeable in, and really just provide a service to you. It doesn't cost you anything, and you're really helping that real estate agent's business. And then on the other side of the coin, from the real estate agent's perspective, it is so key in order for you to be successful, um, to do well, to sell more homes, that you are part of a right, the right team, where you it is about who you know. If yeah. you're trying to do it solo, it's just proven that you're not gonna be successful as if you're on a great team that can help with every single aspect of your business. I love that you bring that up, Matt, because um, in the Who Not How book, they talk about Michael Jordan. 
Michael Jordan was in the NBA, I forget how many years, but for a number of years before he started winning championships. And the things that changed that helped him win championships were who's. Yeah. He was still playing basketball. He was still really good at basketball, but the who's changed. He brought on Tim Grover as a personal trainer and Phil Jackson as a, as a, I almost said a real estate coach, but as, <laughs> as a basketball coach. And so that is what changed. And then Phil Jackson went on to re- have a repeat performance, basically, with the Lakers. And so Phil Jackson was an integral. So that who. was proven right. It showed that Phil Jackson was a key component of Michael Jordan's success. Yeah, right? I'm not, not taking anything away from the individual, like Michael Jordan or whoever sure. whoever it is you're or yourself, we're talking about it yourself, but... But you're right, who knows if Michael Jordan would have been able to do that with a different coach, mm-hmm. or with different teammates if he didn't have Scottie Pippen, you know? Mm-hmm. It's true, it's a great yep. point. And so it's really it's really about the, the who's. And so who knows how far you could go if you worked with the right people like it made for more, you know? Correct. You guys have put together a solid team of people that are experts that know what they're doing. Yeah. And so if you're, try, if you're out there and you're trying to do it solo, which sometimes I think is kind of assumed as a real estate agent, right? You're out there doing it solo. You're independent. Yeah. You know, you're on your own. But that doesn't necessarily always have to be the case. In fact, more people are successful when they're part of a great team like the Made for More Living team. Yeah, and so we get contacted by agents regularly who tell us, man, I wish I would have found out about you guys sooner. I wish I wish I would have started with this team rather than with this team, or rather with you guys rather than at this brokerage. Because it's so hard being a real estate agent. Over nine out of 10 real estate agents leave the industry every five years. And so the average lifespan for an agent, um, you know, there's there's very few agents out there that last longer than five years, just because it's such a grueling industry. It's not what what TV makes it out to be. And so, unfortunately, there's been so many times where people come to us and say, "Hey, I've racked up credit cards," or "Hey, I've had to get another job," or I, "But if I had known about you guys before, I would have had these tools. I would have had these lead sources. I would have had this this support that was lacking." At my in my previous situation, mm. and so it just it just disheartened because I can't do anything about like they call it the ninety day rule. Whatever you do today, like if I like if Matt you were looking to buy a home and you and I started having a conversation about you buying a home today, on average could be shorter, could be longer. It takes ninety days for that real estate agent to get paid. Just working like if if you and I were working right. together, so it's the ninety day rule. So if somebody joins the real estate team, we say, hey, if you start having real estate conversations today, you might get an escrow in 40, 45, you know, 50 days, but on average it's 90 days. And they're like, oh man, I just don't have a 90 day window. I'm gonna have to take this job with the state. You right. Know? And that's not what they're passionate about. That's not what they wanna do, but they were in a bad situation to begin with. They were on a bad team. They didn't have the right who. Right, yeah. so that's good. So what kind of people are you guys looking for? So we're looking for people who are hungry, humble, <laughs> hungry, humble, and coachable. Not hungry in that they have been surviving on top ramen, right? Not that kind of hungry. No, not that type. Not like you're on a, you're, <laughs> Not you're the fasting. hungry where you're desperate. Yeah, so hungry. I do like desperate. You do like I a like little desperate. bit of desperation. I like desperate in the sense that, hey, I burned the boats. That I'm all in on this. This is my chosen profession. That I don't have a plan You've burned B. burned the ships. I burned I love the ships. That. I don't have a plan B. This is what I want to do for the next, you know, 20 years. This is what I want to make a career out of. Okay. I like that um, because it means you're committed to your craft. I was on a call yesterday with one of our um, ISAs. It stands for Inside Sales Agent. What, what an ISA does on our team is they set appointments for our agents. So they set qualified appointments with buyers and sellers. Oh, I love that. It's a massive value add to the agent. Sure. And he called me up and he was all fired up because somebody had um, another assistant that we provide our agents with had gone in there and was messing with his... Um, with with some of his contacts in there, and and, and it was messing up his follow ups, and um, he was all fired up. He, he kept, hey man, I'm sorry if I'm coming off, you know, intense or you know, hot headed. And I'm like, no, I love this. This means you care, right? Right. And so we want agents who care like that. And so if you if this is just like some like a side gig, if you just want to have a hobby, hey, I'll sell a house or two a year, then that's not what the industry needs. That's not what your clients need. Your clients need somebody who's all in. Yeah. Who's, who's Desperate. That's awesome. And that's why Made for More is the best because you guys want the best and you get the best. So if they want to reach out to you, it's just madeformoreliving.com or they can Google Made for More. Absolutely. Yeah. 
You know, oftentimes we hear someone ask, what is it going to cost me if I choose to do that now? But rarely do you ever hear someone ask, well, what's it going to cost me if I choose to wait? And that's something we really need to consider and ask ourselves when it comes to selling your home. What's it going to cost me if I choose to wait? Right now is a perfect time to pull the trigger, especially when you're working with my friend Johnny Jennings and the Made for More Living team. You're going to get the most money possible in the shortest amount of time. He's going to treat you right. You can trust him just like so many of our listeners have. So reach out to Johnny Jennings, Made for More Living. No matter what kind of condition your home is in, he can help. Google Made for More Living because you get more with Made for More and Johnny Jennings.